TypeScript has taken over web development over the last few years, and many of the new projects being built are using TypeScript, and pretty much every library out there uses TypeScript. But you don't actually need to know TypeScript in order to take advantage of everything that TypeScript offers. In this video, I'm going to explain exactly why that is and how you can use TypeScript without even knowing it. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream projects sooner. And the very first way that you can actually use TypeScript without actually knowing TypeScript is just by using VS Code. VS Code has a lot of nice features built into it, so if you're using a library that has TypeScript definitions, or you're just writing out your normal code in JavaScript, it'll be smart enough to actually infer what some of the types of certain things are going to be, which gives you a nice autocomplete and IntelliSense, and you'll notice that if you're working in VS Code, you get tons of autocomplete for JavaScript specific code, even though it has no types at all, it's just plain JavaScript, but VS Code is smart enough to know what some of the types of the things you're working on are, it can infer a lot of that, and it can use the type definitions for libraries that you are installing. So already, just by using VS Code, you can already get a ton of the type safety stuff that you would normally get from TypeScript without actually writing any TypeScript at all. Now, unfortunately, this will only get you so far, though, because as you write more and more custom code and you start getting deeper and deeper into different functions you're writing, you'll start to notice that that IntelliSense and autocomplete starts to fall off and it really is not that great anymore, which is where actually writing your code in TypeScript is going to give you a huge advantage, even if you don't use almost any of TypeScript's features. Now, I know it may seem very intimidating to jump into TypeScript TypeScript if you're not used to types or TypeScript in general, but really you can spend 10 minutes learning three basic concepts in TypeScript, and that's going to give you everything you need to know to actually use TypeScript and get about 95% of the benefits. This is actually why I think it's a little bit of a waste of time to go too deep into learning TypeScript, because a lot of the more complex features of TypeScript you're almost never going to use unless you're writing some really complex libraries that are type safe. But if you're just writing normal day-to-day -day code, you're not going to use 99% of the features that TypeScript has, and if you do run into those scenarios, it's really easy to Google. Now, I know you're probably skeptical, so let me jump into a bunch of different TypeScript projects and show you exactly what I'm talking about, as well as mentioning those three different things you need to learn. Now, this very first project that we're going to look at covers two of the important concepts you need to understand about TypeScript, and this is a very simple project that just has two separate files. You can see this file has almost no TypeScript specific code other than this one single line right here, which is just casting a specific type. So the bulk of our code right here in this file is entirely just plain JavaScript. If I remove this one thing right here, now it's essentially entirely plain JavaScript code. And now if we go over to this other file, you can see again, it's mostly just plain JavaScript code. The only two TypeScript specific things we have are the creation of a type and then the setting of variables to a specific type or like saying that a certain variable in a function is a specific type. So the two things that you really need to understand are how to create types in TypeScript and how to assign those types to different variables or arguments inside of a function. Otherwise, you'll notice a lot of stuff is automatically typed for us. For example, this element here already knows its type. If I just create a variable, I just say a const number equals three. You can see if I hover over this, it already knows that this is a number. Well, right now it says that specifically the type is three, but if I say like let number, there we go, and I hover over this, you can see that the type here is a number specifically. So TypeScript is already smart enough to know this is a number. I don't need to manually say that it is a number type because TypeScript is smart enough to infer that. Same thing with every single one of our functions. You'll notice we don't have any return type specified for any of these different functions. Even though they all return something, TypeScript is again smart enough to know that it automatically returns something. So when I hover this, you can see the return type is automatically typed to this for me, which is the thing that's being returned for my function. So TypeScript is smart enough just to know what I'm returning and I don't need to manually define it. That's why I mentioned that you can do a lot with TypeScript without even knowing any TypeScript. Because if you know those two things, how to create a type and how to define those types on different variables and arguments, you can already get away with writing a bunch of different TypeScript projects and having all that type safety that you know and love. And these two concepts, they take minutes to learn. I mean, you can learn how to create a type and how to define types in you know 30 minutes maximum, and you can do all of that. And now you can write essentially this entire project right here in TypeScript without knowing any TypeScript at all beyond just those small little things. Now, obviously the types can get a little bit more confusing. For example, this type right here is a function that also is a function. So it's a function that returns a function. So that gets a little bit confusing with some of the typing, but overall for the most part your types are going to be like number string or some object so it's going to be relatively simple to write and you don't need a ton of typescript knowledge to do that but this is a fairly simple project so let's step it up a little bit by going to a more complex react based project so here we have a react project and you'll notice again we have a lot of the same similarities i have a type that i'm creating and defining all my different things for that type and then i also have some variables that i'm defining to those specific types 
in React, I find that I do even less TypeScript specific code because all I need to do is just type my variable for my props and then I can do that type right here. And that's pretty much all the TypeScript specific stuff I need to do inside of React. And all the rest of it is automatically handled and taken care of for me. So again, only two things you need to know, how to define types and how to specify those different types. If we go ahead and look at a bunch of the files in this project, you'll notice they all look very similar. You can see we have this type here and this type here, and the rest of this is just plain JavaScript. If I were to remove this and this, now I have just a plain JavaScript function here. So it's exactly the same. I just added these two types in. And by just spending the 30 minutes to learn how to do this stuff in TypeScript and adding that into your code, it's going to make your code so much more type safe and easy to work with. You can see it doesn't really matter where I go. I almost always have some types being defined. For example, this one has a couple different types and then I'm just using those types in specific locations. Otherwise, almost everything else is going to be just the same as you're used to. There is one exception though, and one additional thing that you need to learn, which is the most complex thing you need to learn, and that is generics. As you can see here, we have this weird angle bracket syntax. This is a generic inside of TypeScript, and this is the most confusing thing of the three things that you need to learn, but still, you can learn this and the other two things in less than a day, and that's gonna cover everything that you need to know about TypeScript to actually start writing and using TypeScript and getting all the benefits of type safety. Now, this again is a relatively small project, as you can see here, so I wanna jump over to a larger, more real-world project so I can show you how 99% of your code is going to be just simple stuff like this. So here we have our final project I want to look at. This is a much larger project, as you can see. It has tons of different code and pages. This is a Next.js project. But you can see that this is much larger than everything else that we've covered up to this point. But again, a lot of it is going to be very similar to what you've seen. As you can see, we're typing specific variables. And in the places, we're just defining a bunch of different types. As you can see here, I have a bunch of different types. And again, these types are pretty straightforward. We have you know some strings, some dates, some numbers, a couple TypeScript-specific things. But overall, not too confusing and something that you can do with almost no TypeScript knowledge at all. And 99% of the code in the entire project looks just like this. I mean, all of the code pretty much looks exactly like this, but there is one specific file in this project, only one file where the TypeScript gets crazy and goes beyond the three things that I talked about. And that is right here. And the only reason that this code is so complex, as you can see, I mean, this is crazy TypeScript stuff. I don't even know what half of this does looking at it again because it's so complicated. But the reason I had to do this was because I'm importing a library, a Firebase library, and the types in that library are not type safe at all. They're really terrible in my opinion. So I essentially had to rewrite the types for Firebase and it's quite complicated It's a very large library. So that's why I have all this really complex code here to write out and fix those different types that really sucked when I was working on this. But again, 99% of the projects you work on, you're not going to run into this issue where the library has really bad types or it doesn't have any types at all. And even if it doesn't, usually the library is not going to be something as complex as the Firebase library. If we go to any other files in this project, though, if I just open up a random file, for example, this one, as you can see, just some random types, and that's about it, just defining some different types here, same exact thing. If I look at some of my different pages, you know, these get a little bit more complex, but as you can see, we have some types and we're just using those types inside of here. Again, nothing super complex, maybe a couple generics here and there, but other than that, almost all the code is just your same normal JavaScript code. You're just adding a few different types and defining the types of a few different variables. So if you've been holding off on doing a TypeScript project because you're worried about learning TypeScript since it's so large, don't worry about that. Learn the three things that I talked about in this video, and that's gonna give you 95% of the TypeScript knowledge you need to write any TypeScript project you can think of. Now, if you enjoyed this video and wanna try out some TypeScript specific projects, I'm gonna link them right over here. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.